setting up and connecting to Firebase. In this section, we're going to take a look at setting up Firebase, connecting the signup page to Firebase, connecting the login page to Firebase, and then finally, toggling navbar links based on our authentication status. Setting up Firebase. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a Firebase account, understanding the various parts of Firebase, and using Angular Fire 2 to connect to Firebase. In this episode, we're going to tackle some Firebase, but I just want to fix a couple typos real quick I noticed. In logincomponent.ts, if you scroll down to the bottom, line 60, you can see we misspelled invalid. I'm actually just going to change this here. I'll say invalid email slash password combination. Save that. And also, if you go to the message class under classes slash message.ts, notice we have this create at should be created at so change in those two places so now let's go over to firebase.com incognito window so you can see what it'll look like this is your first time here go to firebase.com and if you haven't been here before and or do not have a gmail account and you're not signed into that gmail account you can go ahead and sign in here if you don't have an account more options you can create an account so go through that process if you don't already have a gmail or google account otherwise you can go ahead and sign in here Go ahead and close that. So once you're all signed in, you should have your image up here, your Google account. So here you can see Bryce Ayers, Bryce at codelife.io. And let's go ahead and create a new project. And we'll call it chat. And for mine, I'm gonna be in the United States, but you can change this to wherever you're at. Click create project. All right, the project is ready. And let's go to authentication. And let's go ahead and set up our sign in method. And they're all currently disabled but we want to go ahead and enable this one here. So you just click on it and then click on the toggle to enable. So this will allow users just to use their email and password. You can also enable Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, you can have anonymous logins if you like. Down here you have authorized domains, so you can set where you're allowed to call it from. There's also some additional security, which we'll get into later. So for database, we want to actually try the Firestore beta. So this is kind of new but we're gonna use this one for this project. So I'm gonna start it in test mode. So we're gonna allow everyone to read and write, which isn't great for security, but for us uh, right now, while we're still uh, troubleshooting issues, this'll be handy and then we'll eventually lock it down. So go ahead and enable that. So now you can see you can add collections here, which will add users and messages, etc. So then we can go to storage. So here's where you can store audio, video, pictures, so any of the user generated images for their like profile images will be stored here. Let's click get started. Okay, got it. Perfect. So we have that for now. Hosting, we don't have to worry about for now, nor do you, we need functions, which these would be like cloud functions. If you had certain functionality you wanted to run in the cloud, that way uh, your apps don't have to do all the processing. So that should be good on that side. So now one last thing I wanna show you in authentication. So we saw, sign in method so here's users this will actually you, we can add manually add some users here if we wanted to sign in method you saw then there's templates so you can actually have email confirmations reset password this stuff's all enabled and available if you trigger it from your front end application so it's kind of nice even sms uh, verification so they have all these nice templates that you can send out and then you can even see your usage. So we're using the freeze here right now. So we have a limit, but we shouldn't be at risk here in this project so far. So let's go to project overview. And if we're doing iOS or Android, we click one of these, but instead we're gonna be doing web. So let's click here and I'm actually just gonna grab this information here. Yours is going to be different. So do not type this in exactly how mine is listed. Yours will be very different. So we copy that and go back over to our project and let's open up the environment.ts file. So this is our dev environment. So we're going to add these keys in here. Shift tab to move that over. And I'm going to use single quotes here. So I'm going to hit command D to select them all. Backspace, delete them and single quotes. Perfect. Now we also want to do that in our production. So environment.prod.ts. We'll do the same thing. Clean this up, select all those. Let's make them single quotes. So normally you would have a production environment and then like a test environment. For us right now, they're gonna be the same environment, but you may wanna create two different Firebase projects. One that's your production chat project and one that's your dev project. That way you don't mix and mingle the data and get some bad data into your production database. 
So now let's go over to GitHub and there's a project on there under Angular. There's a project called Angular Fire 2. Angular Fire 2, 2 being Angular 2 plus because Angular version 1 is very different from Angular 2, 4, 5, and soon to be 6. So this is the version of Angular Fire that you want. This will allow us to connect to the Firebase backend. So if you go down below install, so you can see npm install Firebase and Angular Fire 2. So I'm just gonna go copy these since we're gonna use yarn. Go back over to our terminal, yarn add. We'll let those install. Don't worry about the warnings. And great. So let's go back over to our app and let's go to app.module.ts. So we need to import some stuff here. So one thing we want to grab is our environment, which based on which environment we're using, we can say it's dash dash prod, and that will trigger the prod environment file instead of the dev environment file. By default, when you type ng serve, it's using the environment file. So this will load the appropriate one for us. Also, we need to grab a couple of modules. So we come to our module section. I'm just going to paste them in to save time here. So we have the Angular Fire module from Angular Fire 2, Angular Fire Store, so that's kind of our database, Angular Fire Storage, so this is uh, kind of like if you've used uh, AWS S3 buckets, this allows us to store our pictures, images, and then the Angular Fire Auth module, which allows us to sign in users, sign them out, etc. So now we need to also include them down below, so let me put a comma here, and we'll paste those in. Looks like you can't find that property Firebase. Let's go double check our work there. Put up the environment file. Oh, I see what I did. So let me go ahead and type Firebase here. There we go, since those are all Firebase keys here. So let's see that same in our production config. So just tab those over. Perfect. Let's go back to our app.module. So you see we have Angular Fire module and we call dot initialize app with the environment dot Firebase, uh, which is the environment config for Firebase. Then we're just including the Firestore module, Fire Storage module, and the auth module. Perfect. So now we should be all set up to use Angular Firebase. But one last thing I want to do is let's go over to pexels.com and I just did a search for funny dog. So this picture came back. So I think I'm going to use this to make a default user profile picture. This was graciously uploaded by Gilbert Reyes. So thank you, Gilberto. Uh, so let's go ahead and download this picture. So we have the picture there. And then we're going to go to a website called cropola.com. And we'll drag our picture in. And let's go ahead and resize it to 400 by 400. There we go. I like that a little better. Perfect. So 400 by 400 pixels. Let's go ahead and download this crop. All right. So now let's go back over to you our app. We'll go to storage. That's where we're going to put our pictures. Let's go ahead and upload this file. So we'll grab that. Perfect. So we can open that up. So actually, I'm not sure that we can change that name. I'm trying to find a place to change it. So let's uh, go ahead and delete that and show and finder. I'm just going to change the name of it real quick. All right. So I changed the name. So now if we go to it, it should be called default profile pick. And then if you click on it, we can see the file location. So this is the URL we'll want to use when we go to create a default user profile picture. So that should be it for now. Next up, we'll be working on the login and the sign up and eventually the sign out.